Okay, so we're going to give this a shot. Uh, we're going to take a look at a problem uh, from chapter 6. This is number 101. And uh, this problem is interesting because it incorporates a couple uh, different ideas found in chapter 5, so it's uh, a good review. Um, but still is great practice for us uh, with uh, applying Newton's laws, particularly Newton's second law of motion, but the third law is uh, definitely at play here, action reacting. So um, this problem uh, basically has us looking at a block of wood that is on an inclined surface. I'll give this a sketch here. And this block of wood is being held in place by a spring. We know the angle of incline is 65 degrees. We know the mass of the block is 2 kilograms. And uh, the question essentially is this. When uh, this block is in equilibrium, uh, how far will the spring be stretched? Or, another way to put this, uh, the wording of the question itself. What is the maximum amount the spring can be stretched and the box remain at rest? Now, there's a couple other bits of information that we know. The spring has a spring constant, K, of 360 newtons per meter. And there is friction between the block and this surface right here. And the coefficient of static friction between those two surfaces is 0 0.22. And there are no units on that coefficient of friction. OK. Well, we need to free body diagram this uh, situation. So I'm going to set up my axes first. and. Uh, keeping in mind I've got this angled surface or this inclined surface, I'm going to tilt my axes to match. Just kind of freehand that in. That's going to be my x-axis and my y-axis will be perpendicular to that. So I've got positive x and positive y. Now, object itself Force is acting on this object. This is going to be uh, an obvious one. There is weight pulling straight down. Force due to gravity, weight. There is uh, the spring pulling up on the block, preventing it from falling or sliding down. Force of the spring. There will be a normal force acting perpendicular to the surface. As I draw these arrows, I'm, I'm initially not really sure how long to draw them. And that's okay. If necessary, things can be uh, changed later on. I can redraw this diagram pretty easily, if need be. So, uh, now what else though? Um, friction is mentioned here. There's a coefficient of friction. There is going to be a friction force. So consider this. As, as you set up this system, system, you're going to try to allow the block to stretch that spring. And there's going to be a maximum point where if you let go, the block will remain there. If you stretch further and then let go, the block will rebound due to the spring's restoring force. But when you let go of the block, what is it that keeps it there and prevents the spring from pulling it back up? Well, there's a component of its weight acting in the negative x direction. But when you've pulled it down and the spring wants to pull it back up, there will also be friction here at the surface trying to keep it down, trying to prevent the spring from pulling it back up. Friction will actually be acting in the negative x direction 
here. So um, what I need to do here is, is set up, I'll do it down here, uh, the components of the weight. I'm doing it down here simply so that uh, my free body diagram does not get too cluttered. So where is my 65 degree angle? The surface is inclined to 65 degrees. Will it be on the right side of this force vector or the left side? It turns out it's going to be on the right side, right there. There's my angle theta, which is 65 degrees. Excuse me. So what uh, that means is that this component uh, in the x direction is actually going to be opposite of that angle. So we have Fg sine theta. This component is adjacent to the angle. This will be Fg cosine theta. I do have to draw the last force, that friction force, and I've sort of reasoned out that uh, it's acting in the negative x direction. If friction is opposing the pull of that spring, you've, you've um, imagined pulling the block down and releasing it, and you want to find that maximum distance it can be stretched so that when you release it, it stays there. If you were to stretch it any more, the spring would pull with too much force upward and would move the block back up. So, but when you release it, it's friction plus part of gravity that is preventing the spring from moving the block back up. So friction will be acting down. I don't quite know how long to draw that arrow. This is static friction. But, uh, but I imagine relative to the others, it's going to be a, a, a somewhat small force, somewhat weak force. Okay, I'm going to make a note here. This is just page one. Mrs. Cortez and Mr. High Street, please dial the operator. Mrs. Cortez and Mr. Because High Because I have to go to Street, another page, ran out of operator. room on that one. Here we go. This will be page two. Just trying to keep myself organized. So, I have diagrammed things. I've listed some information that we know. Uh, I need to start looking at Newton's second law. Sum of forces in the y direction. This is going to be uh, zero. And what this tells me is that I've got the normal force which is in the positive y direction. And I've got the y component of gravity, or of weight rather, which is in the negative y direction. So minus Fg cosine theta, and that is zero. Well, from that, therefore, the normal force is equal to Fg cosine theta. Uh, the weight, Fg. Well, I can, I can truly bother to take the time now. It, it's going to be useful to just consider that that is mass times acceleration due to gravity. I'm going to need that later. I might as well do that now. Okay. Sum of forces in the x direction will also be zero. This object is in equilibrium at this maximum stretch of the spring. So the sum of forces in the horizontal I shouldn't say horizontal, maybe just the x direction. I have a spring force in the positive x direction. I have a friction force in the negative x direction. And I have a component of gravity, or of weight, in the negative x direction. One positive force and two negative forces. Here we go. The positive force is the spring force, force of the spring. I have force of static friction acting in the negative direction, and I have the x component 
of weight in the negative direction, and that sum is zero. <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, I have an unknown that is an, a, a distance of stretch. Well, there's, there's ways to break this down uh, in a couple places. Spring force. Spring force can be represented by this relationship, negative kx. And that's where my distance x shows up. And that's good. I, I, I was looking for that guy. That's going to be the final answer that I'm going to find. Having the minus sign here, well... It, it actually does matter if the spring force is in the positive direction. I expect that this displacement or this x value to be in the negative direction. Static friction force. Well, friction force is coefficient of friction times normal force. Oh, okay, fine. Well, we're going to come back to that in just a minute. And force of gravity times sine of theta. Well, force of gravity, the weight, mass, times acceleration due to gravity, times sine of theta. And that sum is zero. So I've broken this down as far as it can go. I've broken this down as far as it can go. But look at what's going on here. Force, uh, the normal force. This normal force, we've already said up here, is equal to something... Uh, more familiar. I actually know its value from that information. So rewriting this whole business, just to keep things simple, try not to do too many things at once, I've got coefficient of static friction. And now instead of F normal, I'm going to write all this business, just a substitution. Mg cosine theta, and then I just finish this off. Mg sine theta. And if I'm paying attention, this might be a good time to check and see if, uh, if I've gone far enough to actually think about solving for my unknown, to try to figure that out. Well, all I've got to do is just a checklist. Uh, do I know everything else? Do I have any other unknowns in the equation? Of course, x is my goal. That's the unknown I'm looking for. Do I know K? Oh, yes, that was given in the problem. Do I know coefficient of static friction? That was given in the problem. Mass was given. G is a constant. Theta was given. Mass was given. G is a constant. Theta was given. I'm good to go. Everything checks out. A little bit of, uh, a little bit of rearranging to isolate my unknown. And... It's going to go something like this. I am simply going to add kx to both sides. So I'm going to end up with a positive kx on one side. And on the and you'll notice I'm just kind of flipping this around. If uh, if this um, if this work in the middle right here of isolating my unknown is is kind of throwing you off, just work through it yourself and and take you know take a bit of time, take a bit of care with it. But it isn't very complicated. I'm sure you'll you'll see it once you've done it. Um, what what this does for me is I end up with negative mu static times cosine of theta, and look what I did. I took out an mg, and that's fine. It'll show up again in just a second. And I'm taking out that mg also, just factoring that out. So I have minus sine of theta. And I've just factored out the mg. And now I'm going to divide both sides by k. And it's just a little convenient, a little nicer looking on paper if I can just bring my mg in front, mg divided by k, and I'm going to multiply by mu static cosine theta minus sine theta. And the minus signs uh, matter. If you keep them straight, you'll end up with the sign on your answer in the correct direction. So now it looks like I can just substitute and solve. So I have m, which is mass. That's 2 kilograms. 2.0 was the value given. 
if, if you don't mind, I'm just going to not write the units within the substitution. It's an, uh, an old habit. I'm, I'm terrible. But you guys can figure this stuff out. If you don't see something, let me know. So there's value of G, 9.81. And divide by the value of K. K was 360. And I have to multiply that by mu static, which was given as 0 0.22 times cosine of theta. Now theta was 65 degrees. And I'm going to take away sine of theta, so sine of 65 degrees. Larger closed parentheses there. And as long as I'm punching numbers on the calculator correctly, what I'm going to end up with is a negative value. which is what you expect. You expect this stretch of the spring to be in the negative direction, the negative x direction. Because you were trying to find how far you could pull this, how far the string could be stretched, while the sum of the forces still maintains equilibrium. So there you go. Now this could also be represented in centimeters, negative 5.4 centimeters. Either way, I'm going to do the whole box around my answer thing because that's just nice to see, especially when you're the teacher. Looks good. Also helps if you're a test reader, hint, hint, and uh, you just want to assign that extra point to people who get the answer right. There you go. This problem that we did, thinking back to what the original problem was, involved springs, so we had Hooke's Law. This problem involved friction, there was the idea of equilibrium of things balancing out. Definitely used some basic geometry stuff. Geometry stuff. How's that? Geometry. What else did we do? Here, we were writing out Some second law equations. Very powerful stuff going on there. <coughs> so uh, there was a lot going on in this problem, but uh, if you take your time and, and read the question carefully, you can break this down. And it, it, it really isn't too hard to, to figure out what's going on here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.